You know, Neutron, I was actually behind this the whole time. Because I am you. <laughs> Neutron. Yeah, at the end of the movie, he just reveals that um, all of it was just his evil self trying to help the real Neutron. Because he thinks of himself as a, bo a brother, you know, in mastermindness. Uh, actually take over the world successfully with a flashy public event that makes him look like he's the cool hero, you know, who could be president, you know, and all that crap. So then, you know, because he's too evil and sinister, you know, the other guy, his, his evil version of him. So he's going to manipulate the other Neutron to get what he wants, you see? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's sinister. That's a sinister, diabolical plan. Yep. From his evil self, who's only in three seconds of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, like, we got to figure out how all the versions of Jimmy Neutron, what I was thinking was, we need to have a plot where, um, in the first movie, Jimmy Neutron, he, um, temporarily, like, so that, like, all of them supposedly are fucking Cindy Vortex in the first movie and have it make sense, like, he just, like, has like his his control helmet on and he like overpowers all the other versions of himself you know because he like secretly when he created them he like put a tracker chip like in the back of their skulls you know so then he's like you know secretly kind of evil so i was thinking like in the sequel type feeling even if you know this is all in the same movie but it feels like sort of another movie because we have to get into immediately this is all easy to film, like, how, like, the version of him that's the cool version that just wants to get a bigger dick and fuck chicks, you know, more epically and put in a porno, and, like, that's his route in life. Then there's, like, the evil version of him that's, like, got the evil eyebrows and is, like, always convincing him that he needs to, like, enslave the populace and become president of everything, you know? So there has to be a moment where, like, he has to, like, make the decision one way or the other. They're both, like, standing there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. They got to be standing there, like, fighting each other. And he's like, help me, Jimbo. Yeah. I need to kick his ass so we yeah. can go back to fucking sluts, Jimbo. Listen yeah. to me, Jimbo. Right? Listen to me, Jimmy Johns. Don't go all nuclear on me. This ain't Jimmy Carter. Help me. I mean, this could all happen at the baseball stadium. You know, them all struggling, you know. Yes. As he's yes, with baseball to, bats. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, blocking and like trying to smack each other. You yes. Know? Yeah. Jimbo, you gotta help me. I. <laughs> yeah. And my Johnson's jammed the Jimbo. Like, yeah, you gotta. He's up, you know, because they always do that. You know how there's the um, overhead stuff, even though it's open to the sky, there's the rail things that go overhead. So they're up on that above the baseball field and crowd, you know, fighting with baseball bats. That had been like, you know, charged with different random, you know, particleized, uh, accelerated elements that, you know, like, that keep hitting them because, like, he had a wristwatch that, like, has different element particles that can charge into things. So then it's like it's gone new, it's gone haywire, and it's like keeps hitting the bat. So first they're like flubber, then they're like red hot, and then, like, all this stuff's happening. So, like, suddenly it's kind of like a, a um one of those lightsabers and like slices through part of the support structure so it's like sagging you know up above the crowd you know but the crowd's so excited because there's a super baseball play going on beneath them of course simultaneously yes while the you know thunderous um storm is threatening to you know shock the whole crowd horrifically and like make it rain giant hailstones but they don't know it because it's like they're in the eye of the storm you know that's like closing around them. <laughs> Jimothy. There's another good one. Yeah. Because <laughs> that would make sense, right? Because then the real Neutron arrives, you know, and the two are fighting there. And so then it's like he has to make the decision whether to 
do what the evil version of him wants to do, which is like invade everyone's minds with all the electricity hitting in the stadium with like this this mind control device he's got set up up there on the platform. So then like if he if he goes that route, then like he can take over everyone's minds and control them and like be supposedly a great hero. But then his like cool self is like, no, you gotta like you know stop the um. Professor Calamitous and all of that because, you know, of course, the evil version of him just wants to himself take over the world and pretend Jimmy Neutron is his, you know, tool to do it. So there's not really any choice at all. But, you know, it's like the inner demon versions of him all at play around him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just saying, Jim Henson, like, you're looking like kind of a puppet. You Maybe you should take a rest and, like, rest your little loins, you know? Yeah. Let the real Jimmy John's, Jim Henson's jams, yeah, Jimmy Jams, you know? Because that's the plot, right? Is that, like, all the versions of um, Jimmy Neutron have already fucked his wife. Then, like, the evil version of him doesn't like being controlled. So then he breaks free, you know, in the middle of the fuck session. He's, like, got evil eyebrows that reactivate. And he, like, steals the invention... And then he's like out there, you know, like making it more powerful so he can take over the world with everyone's minds, you see. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> Listen, Neutron, you'll never be a great hero until you realize that all you are really is the Jimmyeth of the Timmyeth. You gotta you gotta be Jimothy Timothy, you know what I'm saying? Gotta make me some jambalaya, you know. Get get out of here with that gumbo garbage. What are you trying to feed me, Jimmy Johns? I don't like those sandwiches. No, get it away from my face. Yeah. Whoa, you like some sort of Jimmy Jeweler? Cutting all those gemstones with lasers so well. It's like I uh, like my dick late in the night, you know. I go in. I uh, excavate, I mine for, for the diamonds, and I collect the, the rewards, you know, from my family jewels straight straight through, you know. Listen, Jimmy, sweet Mary, Joseph, Jimothy, and Mary, Jesus for Christ, I don't like the way you shake your body, okay? You look like several palsy on top of, like, Jimothy Rousey, okay? You know the inventor of the Gregorian calendar? Well, he actually was the one who invented the joke that Jim Carrey's ripping off. And it actually goes like this. You know when you're in Women with Three Beds and the lumpiest mattress turns to you and says, Save some for me. <laughs> That's the real version. That's the real version. You know when you're in bed with three women... And the hairiest one says, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. That's, that's the joke. You know, when you're in bed with three Jim Carries, and the one that's getting carried the hardest sexually says, Save it for me. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because that chicken was Jim Carrey. He was trying to avoid that third and ugliest woman. I had to clean off the room cam. Had that there's dust and debris all over it. Yeah, so... Are we recording? Yes. Oh. What I was thinking was... Um, he could have already created the alternate versions of him. You know, like flashback, like silver screen in a lab experiment again as an adult already and so then like the cool guy version of him has already escaped and is doing cool guy stuff in the world so he's gotta like you know meet with him and like make an agreement yeah cause like what we're doing here is we're just taking the parts of Jimmy Neutron the cartoon that were the best yes and slap it all into the movie so they end like as though they're news people so it would make sense Cindy Vortex her whole plot is that She's great at certain types of science that blow away even Jimmy Neutron. So she's got the um, weather casting down to a science, supposedly, what's going to rain where. So then she starts thinking she can, you know, make rain shift or do something else because, like, there's a big baseball game or something. So she's got to, you know, it's her duty to the masses, right? 
So then she pretends like she's doing all the research herself too much because Jimmy Neutron, she wants it to seem like she's separate from him, kind of feminist. Then an evil feminist character comes in with the missing technology she needs and it seems like it's all innocent, right? But then the woman just secretly wants to get a hold of the whole project for herself to control the weather of the world, right? So I guess she'd be the villain, pretty much. Yeah. But she could be secretly working for whatever, Dr. Clement Calamitous or whoever. You know, I think it's good because Jim Carrey seems to be breaking down into his component pieces. So it's good to break him down so he can mentally think about the component pieces of his acting and what he really is yeah. and what his emotions are and why they're so extreme. Because I read his book... And it's all doom and gloom, but then he's all Jimbo Jimster. He's all like, you know, Jimmy, like, like, uh, let me tell you, Jimmy Neutron, uh, the entire, you can't control the weather, Jimbo. You gotta, like, let the weather control you, you know? It's like my dick. It's like, I just jump on a jet ski and just fly right out of there, well, you know? Jimmy Neutron was designed to have things that society ignores, and yet tons of people in society don't. It's got llamas and ducks, so you've got his now aged um, father of Jimmy Neutron, who's totally insane and randomly evil, but controlled by thoughts of ducks forever. So it's like he's just living in like an old folks home duck sanctuary that's like in some weird part of the world, and then he's just got a portal Jimmy Neutron to that location so he can visit, you know, his parents where they live because his mother was also, of course, a failed hyper genius who had to limit her own brain's ability to think in different ways because she was too evil you know so she could give up that and have children you know yeah so it's like the Jimbo you know he has to meet up with uh, you know his old self you know his old his old dipshit, you know, he's all like, listen to me, Jimbo, the only two things that matter in this world are doing kickflips on skateboards and getting laid, okay, pal? So yeah. when all the weather and all the other fucking people come deal with your problems, you just say, listen, pal, do you got some pussy and do you got a skateboard? Because yeah. you're not as cool as me, Jimbo, and you never will be. Like, he's because, like every part yeah. of himself is in conflict with himself. His mother know? has to admit that she just... The whole experiment was she she couldn't get pregnant because she already made all the intelligence, all the energy of her body into her head. <laughs> so then she tries to reverse Frankenstein it like it's, you know, a Frankenstein flashback again. Where there's like the big cat crackly things and her dumb husband who loves Doc is supposed to, you know pull the final switch or whatever so then she'll be zapped with the energy that'll shift all of her mental capacity you know down into her ovaries or whatever and zap that direction so then like um it you know mostly works out correctly but then like it shows like on the hyper particle level you know that as he's forming you know as a tiny baby like, there's all of those on the uh, atomic level, all those particles of thought intelligence sucking out of her brain straight down into him, you know, so she gets stupid as, you know, he gets hyper p pummeled into his brain with all the charged particles of intelligence all stupid and nonsensical. <laughs> I don't know. Neutron intelligence. Listen, Neutron, you got a swollen head and I got a swollen head in my pants, okay, pal? We got two separate problems here. Yeah. I don't want to help you, Neutron. Yeah. That's what that's what his, you know, his cool self is like. He's like, yeah. you got problems and I don't want to solve them, bitch. You yeah. Know? Looks like I busted Neutron's dick. You know, he like, you know, because it's like his sad self, you know what I mean? You have different parts of him in the movie. Yeah. So his sad self is like hating on his cool self. And he's all like, I don't want to help you in the Neutron. And then he's like, you know, he showed up on a skateboard, right? So then he kicks him in the dick and snaps his skateboard in half doing a kickflip that he fails yeah. off the curb, you know, breaks the board. And then he's like, looks like I snapped your dick and your board. But see, Neutron <laughs> is always based around, he's always trying to create the perfect telepathic brain helmet and always has those stupid, like he's a kid, those different colored light bulbs flashing and stuff like a tin helmet. So he finally, you know, at the end of the movie needs to perfect it 
as he realizes his origin story. So then, you know, the woman's trying to, you know, create an enormous, um, terrible storm to, you know, terrorize, you know, the baseball game that Cindy Vortex said would have perfect weather. So then, to prove his love to her, you know, and not destroy her reputation to the world, he, um, puts on his new super helmet as he realizes that he is based off of, you know, electricity. So then he's, you know, like, you know, uses the whole baseball stadium, you know, as a charge point for all the electricity of the storm. And then he's all like, you know, takes all the energy and he like, you know, blasts it. I'm trying to think here. Dr. Calamitous at the same time, he has a space laser, ironically, because he's, like, turned into, like, a robot who's long dead, you know? But he's got his, like, Calamitous shaped, like, his body, like, out satellite out there floating, and his laser eyes are gonna, like, also, like, destroy stuff on planet Earth. So then, like, Jimmy Neutron, like, directs all of the energy of the electricity, like, up at his, his satellite and blows it up, you know? Yes, but of course, you know, you got to cast the Cindy Vortex. Because <laughs> this, is, this is all retarded porno, you know. I'm saying it right now. you got to have, like I said, a bunch of body doubles of Jim Carrey. Yeah. Then if they all have ridiculous, you know, cartoonized caricature heads. Yeah. Of That's different, different personalities. Personalities of them. So they don't have to be, look exactly the same. It's like they all escaped from him because it's like... She basically had five children at once is kind of the point. So they all have different personalities that split out from him. And they've all been living their own lives, sort of. So they don't all have to look the same. But then they all come together because they're all obsessed with, you know, fucking Cindy Vortex, right? <laughs> it's the greatest porno ever. This is so funny. Yeah. So, like, um... What? Is... Do we just... We just getting a random actress who's right for the role who isn't established? I don't know. I, I don't see why not. Yeah, it <clears throat> seems like it. I mean... The whole point is that everybody fucks Simmy, Cindy but Jimmy Neutron. Unless Jim Carrey gets jealous. And then, and then I, I guess not. I don't know. I don't know. I, it's, it's a porno, so he doesn't have to commit to getting in that good of shape. Um, actually fucking a woman who's just a porn star or whoever is chosen. Like, he doesn't have to get yeah. that deep into it. Yeah, you, you don't have to, to, you know, get your wife involved and have a bunch of guys fuck you that look like you with your wife. I'm not saying you have you to do that. You don't have to do that, but, you know, it's a pretty good opportunity for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? It wasn't going? Okay. I, I ain't wearing that... Why are you trying to Jimmy Huth on me? I ain't wearing that garbage. You can't make me wear that, that shit. It looks terrible. How bad could the storm be? Neutron, you nerd. I'm gonna walk out there to be fine. And then he walks out there and gets a lightning bolt directly onto his dick that shocks him. Yeah. And then he walks back in and he's all like, It was pretty bad. My <laughs> dick hurts. <laughs> and then he collapses. Yep. That's the Whoa, stop particle accelerating your neutrons at me. Why are you doing that, bruh? I don't even know what science is. Why would I know anything about weather, dog? The only weather I know about is when they ejaculate all over my face with the pussy squirt, you know? <laughs> 